Ever wondered if cryptids such as Bigfoot or Yeti were actually real? What if your parents were undercover agents who work for a secret organization to protect these beings? And what are the secrets behind the first cryptid known as Kerr? All of your questions will be answered as we unfold the entire story of the Secret Saturdays from start to end. So, in the world of Secret Saturdays, there are beings called cryptids, who are essentially animals with some kind of supernatural element to them. Their existence is traced back to Kerr, an ancient cryptid that ruled all of its kind centuries ago. Kerr was a strong entity that caused havoc in the world until the warrior king Gilgamesh challenged his strength with the help of the Legion of Garuda. When Kerr's spirit was banished, its essence hid in a stone which is now called the Kerr Stone. Centuries later, a yeti that went by the name of Argos lived in a mountain range and would terrorize anyone who roamed around its turf. One day, he came across a family and attacked them which separated the two siblings for several years. The monks of the Himalayas took in the girl, trained her, and gave her a Tibetan fire sword that she now carries as a weapon. Her brother, on the other hand, was taken as an orphan who convinced himself that his sister was never real. He then became a strong fighter who would cross paths with his long-lost sister later in the show. As for their names, these two were Doyle and Drew Blackwell. As for Argost, he had been influenced by obtaining Kerr's powers, so alongside Xing Xing, he watched television to learn the human language. When he had learned enough, he made himself a stone mask to hide his face and started exploring the human world, ever since he has been seeking the stone to harness Kerr's powers. Several years later, Drew and her husband, Doc Saturday, led a team of archaeologists to Iraq where they found the stone buried underground. Argos had disguised himself as a worker at the dig site and took the opportunity to steal it. Eventually, they tracked him down to Weird World and recovered the stone, but it came at the cost of many lives. Learning the stone's secret, the team decided to split it into three pieces, with one piece staying with Doc while the other two are split between Henry Chaveo and Miranda Gray. The same year, Drew gives birth to Zack, a boy with extraordinary abilities. Moreover, the family has two pet cryptids, Fiskerton and Komodo, both of whom accompany them on almost all their missions. The show opens up with Zack being 11 years old and the family embarking on a mission to capture a Cameroon flashlight frog in a jungle, but chaos ensues as they disrupt ruins and encounter danger. After heading back, Doc and Drew learn that Argost has taken two of the three pieces of stone. Luckily, they hid their piece in the Amazon River Basin, but now they have to retrieve and guard it from Argost. I've got to say, not the brightest moment of the Saturdays. Soon after, the Saturdays rush to Brazil to prevent Argos from obtaining the final curse stone piece. During an aerial skirmish, their airship crashes due to Zack because, well, like father like son, I guess. Anyways, the family faces challenges, including a hostile cryptid and a showdown with Argos. However, Zack's decision to save a cryptid yields a clue to the stone's location. Argos' plan unfolds, and the Saturdays are determined to decipher the stone's encryptions. Zack's playtime with Fiskerton is interrupted by Doc and Drew, who announce their plans for their anniversary. Left in the care of Dr. Arthur Beeman, Zack and his cryptid companions trick Beeman into believing Zahn is a UFO. With Beeman away, they have fun in the Saturday's house. However, an intruder named Pietro Piecemeal Maltese breaks in, and Zack realizes their prank caused a power outage, leaving them defenseless. Piecemeal chases them throughout the house, with Fiskerton as his target. However, after the systems reboot, Zack uses Drew's fire sword to defeat Piecemeal, sending him crashing through a wall into the water. The episode ends with Piecemeal surviving the fall and crawling away. In search of the Alkali Lake monster, the Saturdays clash with Drew's ex-boyfriend Van Rook and Doyle over the monster's horn, which is a key to Kerr's tomb. Underwater, Drew confronts Doyle for the horn, accidentally knocking off his helmet and revealing his face. Emerging with the horn, Doc attacks Doyle until Drew stops him, revealing her suspicion that Doyle might be her long-lost brother. Van Rook aids Doyle's escape, while Drew and her family return to HQ with the horn. Drew researches the potential familial connection, sharing her story of being separated from her family during a Himalayan trip. Doyle contacts Drew for help, which he accepts despite Doc's reservations. During Drew and Doyle's meeting, they are attacked by Argos, and back at HQ, Doc is ambushed by Munya and Van Rook. Despite the skirmish with Argos, Doyle arrives at the Saturday HQ, offering her assistance in opposing Argos after learning unsettling truths about him. 
Later, they all strategize about their cursed stone piece and pinpoint a ridge near Monon, England. En route, they discover the locals' concern over an owlman who has been kidnapping people from the village. That night, they get imprisoned due to Doyle's recklessness, which causes tensions between the group. Later, they confront the owlman and narrowly escape its clutches. Later, Doc hands Doyle his payment and asks him to leave because he keeps putting them in danger, but he refuses the money and flies off on his own. Anyways, in the end, after examining symbols near the Almond's nest, Zack realizes they're a map marking Kerr's tomb, crediting Doyle for the discovery. So he wasn't useful after all. In an ancient Aztec temple, the Saturdays encounter the smoke mirror of Tezcatlipoca, which ends up causing destruction and knocking out Zack. When he wakes up, he finds a mirror image of himself called Zack Monday that wants to send him to the mirror and take over his life. They fight until Drew arrives and reveals the universe-threatening consequences of their coexistence. It gets a whole lot confusing because Zack has no idea who is real and who is a fake. In the end, the Saturdays and Mondays confront in a tense showdown, resulting in Zack M using the smoke mirror to suck his own family in. As the Saturdays escape, Zack M and Komodo M emerge from a shard, planning a new life together. Meanwhile, the Saturdays stumble upon Van Rook's involvement in hosting illegal cryptid fights with gambling at play. Suspecting more than meets the eye, the family infiltrates the scheme, enlisting Fisk into the fights with Doyle managing him. However, as they delve deeper, they realize that Van Rook might not be the sole orchestrator. Although they initially succeed in dismantling the cryptid fights, their plans take a dangerous turn when the formidable Rakshasa emerges. During the chaos, Zack experiences a distressing power surge, but with the aid of Doc and Drew, he manages to release the captive cryptids. Doyle ultimately confronts Van Rook in combat, revealing that the arena itself is Kerr's tomb, and Zack's intervention unknowingly assisted Argos in removing the cryptid guardian. As the events unfold, Van Rook is captured and his face is revealed. The mystery deepens with a stone bearing the likeness of their cryptid companion Fiskerton, hinting at his pivotal role in unlocking Kerr's enigma. Sometime later, the Saturdays uncover Sanctuary 2, a hidden city supported by modern comforts without harming the environment. However, the city is attacked by cryptids called Lao, whose aggression stems from their mother being caged to provide electricity for the city. When they try to free her, the locals resist against them, but Doyle returns to assist Zack in freeing the Lao and their mother, resulting in the city's rightful destruction. Back on the airship, Doyle and Doc reconcile, and Doyle declines a permanent return to the Saturdays but promises to stay in touch. The gang is back together. Well, sort of. So, Argos and Munya decide it's time to break Van Rook out of jail. Their plan? Kidnap Fiskerton. They set up a trap with a fake cryptid, and when the Saturdays show up ready to rumble, it's chaos time. Doc gives Fiskerton the job of being Zack's bodyguard in the midst of all the craziness. But things go nuts, and they end up stuck on a runaway train about to crash. That's when Argost plays his card. He makes Fiskerton choose between himself or Zack's safety. In the end, Fiskerton turns himself in to save Zack's life. To save Fiskerton, the Saturday crew launches an all-out assault on Weird World, and they get a helping hand from Doyle. Inside, the Queen of Nagas reveals to Argos that Fiskerton isn't the legendary cryptid Kerr like he thought. He's actually a Lemurian who can point the way to Kerr. Doyle overhears this conversation and swoops in to rescue Fiskerton. Meanwhile, the family's going through all sorts of crazy challenges, but Drew's on a mission to capture a photo of the last chunk of the Kerr stone. They manage to escape with Fiskerton intact, and now Doc thinks it's a great idea for Doyle to train Zack since he's got skills they don't. Doyle agrees, and even though they've learned a lot, Doyle and Fiskerton keep their newfound info under wraps. Later, Zack and Doyle join forces to dig into Fiskerton's Lemurian background, getting a helping hand from Abby Gray. The trail leads them to Shangri-La, where a mind-reading stone reveals that Fiskerton's destined to safeguard the world from Kerr's nastiness. Soon after, Ronnie Nagi swoops in, aiming to erase Fiskerton from the picture, but Fisk ain't having it. With the truth finally out there, Fiskerton decides it's high time to let Doc and Drew in on the scoop. And as the events unfold, Fiskerton's flashbacks to his time with the Saturdays help him weigh the pros and cons of revealing the truth to Zack. Next up, the Saturdays, along with Abby, head to the Allegheny Mountains to handle an issue triggered by a cryptid known as the Alajui. 
However, as they explore, everyone gets snagged by some cunning traps set by Abby, who is now working for Van Rook. Her plan is to leave the family trapped for the Alagui to have them as a meal. Yet, she finds herself unexpectedly caught in her own trap alongside the Saturdays. You go, girl. The Alagui sets them free to hunt them down again as prey, which gives the team a chance to turn the tables. By the end, Abby puts her life on the line to rescue Zack and Doyle, and despite everything that's transpired, she pledges to complete the task she was hired for. Meanwhile, Argos employs a clever strategy to snatch Rani Nagi's cur-detecting artifact, provoking her anger-fueled ultimatum to manipulate the Atlas Pin, an immense stone holding the Earth's tectonic plates in place. Well, unless the Saturdays play fetch. The Saturdays split into two groups. Doyle, Zahn, Doc, and Fiskerton set off to track down Argos, while Zack, Drew, and Komodo embark on a mission to locate Rani Nagi. Venturing to Kumari Kandom, Drew's team confronts the city serpent, now under Rani Nagi's control. After a tense skirmish, they manage to subdue the serpent and track down Rani Nagi and her entourage. In a retaliatory move, her group triggers the Atlas Pin, but Ulraj steps in and averts disaster with the assistance of the city serpent. Meanwhile, Doc's squad engages in a fierce battle with Argos to regain the relic and successfully recover it after a heated clash. However, Fiskerton decides to shatter the relic, opting to rely on his instincts to locate Kerr. Yet, unbeknownst to the others, Doyle discreetly collects the fractured relic pieces, setting the stage for the future events to come. As the search for Kerr reaches its climax, each member of the team devises their own approach to locate the creature. The Saturdays enlist the expertise of paraneurologist Dr. David Barra to unravel the origins of Fiskerton's instinctive behavior. Simultaneously, Argos takes a more aggressive route by dispatching a neural parasite to the Saturday's residence, aiming to forcefully extract Kerr's whereabouts from Fiskerton. And amidst all this, Doyle has discreetly repaired the Kerr-sensing artifact. Later, when the neural parasite attaches itself to Fiskerton, his brain commandeers Barra's equipment, leading him to construct Fisk bots that wreak havoc upon the Saturday's home. After Zack removes the parasite, Fiskerton discloses that Kerr's presence will be unveiled in Antarctica. With this revelation, the Saturdays set out on their journey to find Kerr, while Argost, who has been observing their movements through the neural parasite, also heads towards the same destination. In freezing Antarctica, the Saturdays stumble upon this weird symbol on the Kerr stone. They're poking around this volcanic crater and find this gigantic seven-headed monster bursting out of the ice. So, they all dive into this epic battle with the beast, and Zack's powers start acting up, making them wonder if Argos is messing with him. Zack and Fiskerton team up and somehow dive into the creature, only to discover that Argos is puppeteering its moves and even giving it the power of flight. Zack manages to beat Argos, breaking his hold over the cryptids, but Munya shows up to save Argos' skin. In the end, Zack's eyes light up orange and the same symbol appears in his eyes, revealing that he's actually the true Kerr. It's a jaw-dropping revelation that changes everything and sets the stage for a whole new adventure for the team. As Season 2 opens, the secret scientists have figured out that Zack is the real Kerr, which turns the Saturdays into fugitives. As they're being pursued by the scientists, Zack realizes the danger this puts his family in. On top of that, the Nagas are also after him hoping he'll lead them and the cryptids into a new era. Meanwhile, Doyle has a run-in with Van Rook, who lost his business to Abby while searching for the missing Argos. It's a lot of chaos for the Saturdays to handle as everyone wants to get their hands on Zack. The Saturdays are in a tough battle to prevent the Nagas and other cryptids from launching a global invasion. Meanwhile, Doyle, Zahn, and Van Rook continue their search for Argos, with some signs suggesting he might be dead. The family's initial prediction of the Nagi invasion happening in Hong Kong proves wrong as they face an invasion in New York. As an intense surge of Zack's power leads to a massive explosion, Doc helps boost his confidence, motivating him to take action and thwart the invasion. Out of the blue, Argos appears, saving Zack and revealing his intention to aid and train him. So he wasn't dead after all. Argos proposes to train Zack and asks for his decision atop the Empire State Building. Zack reluctantly agrees to Argos' offer, though Fiskerton isn't entirely on board with it. The Saturdays head to Mexico following a cryptid sighting of the Huizotl on Weird World. After a fierce confrontation with Miranda and Deadbolt, the Saturdays manage to incapacitate Deadbolt and send Miranda fleeing into the jungle. 
As they continue their journey, they stumble upon a village populated by masked inhabitants. While the team emerges victorious in a battle against the villagers, Zack notices that one of them lacks eyes. Zack, Fiskerton, and Komodo eventually encounter the Ahui Zodal, a formidable creature resembling a monkey with a hand tail that steals eyes. That explains the missing eyes. A battle ensues, during which the Ahui Zodal attempts to steal the team's eyes. Thankfully, Tika, a young girl from the village, provides them with masks that protect their sight. Following a challenging battle, the team manages to seal the Ahui Zodal within its tomb. Now, to fend off a number of enemies from their son's back, the Saturdays travel to India in search of the ancient Indian sorcerers who once drove out the spirit of Kerr using the Flute of Gilgamesh. They seek out the Legion of Garuda to learn about the ritual and meet Gokul, the Legion's headmaster who is more than happy to perform the ceremony. However, the ritual requires a flute, which was stolen by the Nagas long ago, so the Saturdays head out to retrieve it and begin the ritual to expel Kerr's spirit. Midway, they realize this would mean killing Zack, who is Kerr himself, so the Nagas, Seeker Scientists, and the Saturdays unite their own motives to save him. They prevent the ritual's completion, but Gokul escapes. In the end, Argos can be seen in possession of the flute. Returning to their dilapidated headquarters, the Saturdays are ambushed by Tsul Kalu, whose hand is integrated into Zack's claw. Throughout the episode, Zack experiences visions each time he tries to use his powers on Tsul Kalu. The visions include scenes of Fisk and Komodo glowing, ruined buildings, a crashed airplane, pursuing cryptids, and a confrontation with a human. The final vision shows Zack slash Kerr facing fire and breaking a mirror, possibly symbolizing his potential future. Feeling misunderstood and believing that even the benevolent cryptids see him as evil, Zack gives up and surrenders the claw to Tsul Kalu. However, Tsul Kalu returns it, acknowledging Zack's inner goodness, and departs. A few days later, Zack's birthday celebration takes an unexpected turn with surprise appearances by Ulraj and Wadi. Amidst the festivities, the Saturdays deceive distressing news about a town under cryptid attack. Upon arriving to investigate, they find themselves under assault by the very creatures they sought to help. In a significant encounter within a clock tower, Argos drops hints about Kerr's capacity to command an entire army of cryptids across vast distances. Meanwhile, Zack, Wadi, and Ulraj embark on an underground pursuit of the cryptids. However, their pursuit leads them into being trapped in a pit gradually filling with dirt. In this dire moment, Zack recalls Argos' enigmatic words and successfully calls upon a cryptid to save them. Their journey reveals that the cryptids are assembling a survival colony to shield themselves from Kerr's influence. Understanding their fear, Zack secures their trust by vowing not to inflict any harm. Later, Argos provides Zack with a neural parasite for future communication, a gesture met with skepticism by Fisk. Sometime later, Zack reluctantly uses the neural parasite on Fiskerton to capture a monster, but Argos quickly intervenes, demanding Zack's presence. Zack complies and is taken to a secret island by Argost, who unveils his sinister plans and reveals his past actions, including stealing the Flute of Gilgamesh. Zack Monday, released from the smoke mirror, is controlled by Argos to conduct a ritual that painfully steals his anti kerr powers. If you are confused, Zack M is the opposite of Zack S, and since our Zack has Kerr's powers, Zack M will naturally have the negative version of Kerr's powers. After the ritual, Zack Monday lies lifeless, and Argos discards the mirror and his mask, revealing his cryptid nature. A battle ensues between Zack and Argos, but the latter prevails until Tsul Kalu and Zack's family arrive to rescue Zack. Argos escapes with Munya, and Zack reveals Argos' ability to control a cryptid army. Soon after, Argos releases a horde of cryptids onto the world, prompting the Secret Saturdays to fight back. The Secret Scientists play the flute of Gilgamesh to subdue Zack and Argos, but its power becomes lethal to both of them. Miranda realizes the Scientists' true intention of killing them both and helps Drew stop the music. Meanwhile, Rani Nagi and the Naga approach Argost, revealing their belief that he is the true Kerr worth following after stealing Zack Monday's negative Kerr powers. Encouraged by this, Argost agrees to destroy humanity rather than enslave it. To thwart his plans, the Saturdays locate Argos' mansion, where a final battle ensues. Drew's attempt to strike Argost is stopped by Rani Nagi, leading to Van Rook sacrificing himself to save her. 
Meanwhile, Zack warns Argos about the potential dangers of his power, but reluctantly agrees to a deal with Argos, leading to the transfer of the Kerr power. As a result of the dangerous fusion of matter and antimatter, Argos is consumed by a vortex and most likely meets his end due to his hunger for power. In the end, the Saturdays rescue Zack, who awakens without his cryptid powers, and the series ends as they mourn Van Rook's sacrifice with a funeral. Now, you thought that would be the end, but I have a little surprise for you. In a crossover episode, the Secret Saturdays meet Ben Tennyson, the team up to deal with the Chupacabra attacks with Zack introducing Ben to cryptid hunting. They discover that Dr. Anemo has revived Argos, who has anti cur abilities and commands an army of cryptids. Ben transforms into various aliens to battle the threats and as the team faces both Argos and Anemo, a fierce battle ensues. Ben defeats the cryptid army using Shock Squatch's electric attacks, and Zack learns from Ben about Feedback, an alien capable of absorbing energy. With teamwork, they defeat Argos and free the controlled cryptids. The episode ends with a humorous moment where Zack asks for a picture with Ben in his alien form, showcasing their successful collaboration. So that was The Secret Saturdays for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you at the next one.